What's up guys and girls and welcome back to another Python tutorial video. In this video we're going to be having a lot of fun and that's because we are going over functions. Functions allow you to simplify your code by breaking it into small reusable components and they're used super frequently when you're programming. Um, before I go through functions we'll do that challenge problem that I introduced in the last video. And then finally, we'll end this video by doing a couple of practical function examples where we kind of have, we, we use all the skills we've learned thus far and try to apply it to solve some problems. As always, um, the video outline will be posted in the comments. So make sure to check that out if you want to find a, a specific thing that we go over. And please, if you like this video or are learning anything from this series, throw me a big thumbs up and also subscribe so that you don't miss any future tutorials. All right, as always, open up a new Sublime Text 3 window and save a new Python file. I'm just calling this lesson3.py. And to begin, we're going over that problem that I introduced in the last video. So we're trying to find the, we're gonna to try to write a set of conditional statements that identifies numbers as special numbers. And special numbers are defined as numbers less than 100 or greater than or equal to 300 that are perfectly divisible by three, seven, or both. So let's begin just by defining a number as something like, I don't know, 123. We'll mess around with this as we get it going. So what we're gonna do for this set of conditional statements is, I think it's important we should begin by just identifying whether or not it is a special number and then we'll go into breaking down case by case. So if it's a special number, then it has to be, begin with this line here, has to be, either less than 100 or number has to be greater than or equal to 300. And that's just this line right here. So I'm gonna group that together because only one of these things has to be true. But if it is a special number, one of these like definitely does have to be true. So we got that. Then the second part of something being a special number is that it's perfectly divisible by three, seven, or both. So we need to do and so we're now leading into the second condition. We have number mod three, so that does divided by three, then take the remainder, equals equals zero, so that'd make it perfectly divisible, or number mod seven equals equals zero. And this statement over here will be true if it's either divisible by three, divisible by seven, or if these are both true, it still is true. So this now identifies if it's a special number. So I'm just gonna say print special number, and then we can write down here, hopefully you can see this, else print, and then I'm just gonna copy what I told you to say, not a special number. Whoa, ooh, these quotes are weird. Copy and pasting didn't work for me. All right, not a special number. So we should all have this on the screen right now. So 123 would not be a special number because it's not less than 100 or greater than or equal to 300. So if I try, let's say 317, that now is just not perfectly divisible by three or seven, but it would um, meet this qualification. So let's just try something we know that's divisible by three. So I'm gonna do 303 and that would be 101 times three. So this should say special number. And that looks good. And when we're writing something like this, make sure you play around and try to test all the edge cases to make sure it's actually working properly. So we have it identifying it's a special number or not. Now we just need to write a set of nested if statements to figure out if what condition it is. So I'm gonna start with if number mod three equals equals zero and number mod seven equals equals zero then it would be this case right here, divisible by both. So I'm just gonna copy that in and paste it here. Then we could do else if, so elif number mod three equals equals zero. So right now, if it didn't pass this condition, then we know it's one or the other because it did pass this condition. So I'm gonna now just do number mod three equals equals zero. And if that's the case, then 
because it didn't pass this above condition, it must only be divisible by perfectly divisible by three. So I'm going to copy that in and print that out. Ah, we need quotations. There we go. Divisible by three. And then finally, you could either write elif number mod seven equals equals zero, but that's actually not necessary. You can just do else because we know it's either divisible by three or seven from this statement up above. So we can do print divisible by seven. And then we should just, this is, this is the uh, completed challenge problem, but you should always just confirm that it's working. Divisible by three, um, cool. If we think about it, let's say, let's, what, what is a number that is divisible? I'm gonna just comment all this out real quick. I'm gonna find a number that's divisible by seven perfectly. So we'll just do like seven times uh, 70 or something, or 50. That'll be 350. Uh, and we know that that works, that's above 300. So, or actually we could just do a number like 21 just to make sure it does the both condition because that's less than 100 but divisible by both. So we'll try number equals 21 and see if that works. Divisible by both, cool. And then a number that wouldn't be divisible by three would be something like 70, but it would be divisible by seven. Cool, it all looks good. And you could more robustly test this if you wanted to, but I think it looks good. And also testing is a feature of programming that is super important. And I'll make sure that I make a video on like the proper way to test your code in the future. Okay, now that we've done that, let's move into functions, the main focus of this video. So I wanna just delete all of this code here. I might post it on my GitHub if you're looking to just get the final code. So check the description for that. Delete, save. Okay, now we have a blank slate. I'll make this a little bigger too. Okay, so functions. So to introduce the functions, I wanna show you a concrete example of why they're so useful. So here I have a, a turtle program. And what this turtle program does is it builds this animation. So it's just drawing pentagons on the screen. And if you've never seen the Python turtle package, I really recommend checking it out. It's a fun way to uh, play around with your Python skills. Uh, I made a video kind of going over everything you can do in it, and I'll post that link straight above me right here. So check it out if you haven't already. Okay, so that's what happened. It ran these pentagons, and the code for that is all over here on the left side. So as you can see, um, it's a lot of code. It's 145 lines here. But if you look closely, you know, I'm moving the pen, I'm making a turtle called Bob, I'm setting his speed and color, and uh, then I'm setting his position, initial position and I'm drawing the pentagon right here. And then I move locations, draw another pentagon here, move locations again, draw a pentagon. And every time I draw this pentagon, it's the same exact thing. Like it's kind of, it seems silly that I have to copy and paste so many times when I'm doing the same exact thing to draw a pentagon. So this is why we use functions. So this was our kind of our, our code without functions. And now I, over here on this tab, I wrote the same exact code. It does the same exact thing you can see here. Wow, this is so fun. Uh, uh, does the same exact thing, but now we have this function called draw pentagon, which takes in the turtle, which would be the turtle's name, which in this case would be Bob, then has an X and Y variable that tells it where to start the pentagon. So this is the exact same thing as we were doing here with this go to, but now we've replaced 50 and negative 50 with X and Y placeholders. Um, you know, if you don't understand this fully right now, don't worry about it. I'm gonna break down how to actually write a function in a sec. I'm just showing you that I took the same exact code from this, put it over here, made this a function, and then I was able to get everything in there within 36 lines. So we just cut down over 100 lines by using functions. So pretty useful. And also it's easier to read now. Now I just see 
I'm drawing a bunch of pentagons as opposed to like all of this kind of messy set of lines. Okay, so that's a function. Uh, I'll put this code in the description as well on my GitHub page. Okay, let's write our first function on this blank file. So we're gonna define a function called a spam. And to do that, we would write def spam parentheses and then colon. So this def, whenever you're writing a function, you have to start with def, which means define. Then it's saying, we're defining a function called spam. So this can be whatever name you want it to be here. And then open and close parentheses. And then if you need to like pass things into your function, you can like list them off here and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But we're doing a really basic example right now. And you're gonna see why it's called spam in a second. So imagine I'm trying to write a function to just spam you guys with, uh, with messages. I can do define spam and then I could have it print out something like subscribe Keith, he is the best. So if I was trying to spam you, I could now save that and also know that just like if statements, this has to be indented inside the function name. So now what this means is that whenever I call spam parentheses, spam parentheses, it will actually print out subscribe Keith, he is the best. So if I really wanted to spam you, I could just keep copying and pasting that. So right now I have it like 10 times, save that. And as you can see, it copied that 10 times and printed it out. Um, so that's a really basic function. Let's uh, move into something a little bit more uh, useful, I guess, unless uh, I guess this maybe is useful for me. Uh, all right, we got spam. Let's, uh, let's write a function that cubes a number. So we pass in a number and it returns that number cubed. So like if we passed in three, it would do three times three times three, which is uh, 27. So we're gonna call this cube. Or we'll call it cube number. Oh, what the heck happened? Cube number. And in this case, we have to pass in the number we want cubed. So in these parentheses, we write like something like X. And this can be anything that you write in this parenthesis. It doesn't have to be X, it could be number or something. Um, it's just this, this spot right here just acts as a placeholder. So def cube number, and I'm just gonna make it X just to be, to make it simple. And I could do something like, so print x, and then two exponent or two uh, asterisks is to the q or to the root of three. So this is x to the third power. And now if I call cube number of three, it right it prints out twenty seven. So there's one thing you that, that you would kind of, I feel like, assume when you're writing functions that you'd use this print statement. So it's actually not the case that we want to use the print statement in the functions. We actually want to use a statement called return. And I'm going to show you why right now. So if I left this as print, let's say I wanted to set a variable just called a or something like as the cube of three. Now if I try to print a, you'll see that if I leave this as print, it doesn't actually print out a. So I'm gonna, it says none here, right? And the reason is, is yes, it printed out 27, but printing is not allowing us to capture that value. So if we really wanna capture that value, what we should use in functions, and this is like, you definitely use this in functions. You don't use print in functions unless you're just like checking something. You use return. So I'm gonna do return x to the third power. And now if I run this, you see it just says 27. Um, and that's because right now it didn't print, return doesn't print it out automatically. It only printed it once we set it to A and now it leaves us with 27. Okay, so that's a very simple example. And just to note, like 
as I told you before, you can change this X to anything you want. I could change it to something like dilly, dilly. And if I returned dilly, dilly to the third power, it still doesn't give me an error. And I could even show you, I could raise this to like the seventh power so you know it's like actually changing it up. And as you can see, it worked with dilly, dilly. It would work with something like John Cena. Really, <laughs> anything you want to put in here, it would work as long as you're consistent with um, this is what you pass in, this is what you passed in to the seventh power. That's what we want back. So this would still work. So let's do the square, it would be nine. That still works. But as the convention, you probably shouldn't use John Cena as your variable name. You should pass in things that are descriptive. So X is like descriptive enough it just knows that it's just like a number placeholder uh, you could also do something like num num to specify this is the number you're passing in uh, so be descriptive with these variable names that's the basic example all right let's uh, move into a little bit more of an exam a uh, little bit more complicated of an example still pretty straightforward you could also do something like define get sum so let's say we wanted to maybe take a second and try this on your own. Say we wanted to be able to write a function that took three numbers and added them all together. So whatever three numbers we took, it would just combine them and return the combined sum. So try to write that function real quick. Okay, I'm gonna write it right now. So I'm gonna define a function called get sum. <laughs> That's kind of a fun name, get sum. And this will take in three values. I'm just going to call them, for simplicity's sake, A, B, and C. And so now, if I wanted to find the sum of A, B, and C, I would return. So these are placeholders for three numbers. I would just return A plus B plus C. And if I then... Ah, what happened? So what, am, what is happening? If I ran this doesn't do anything because we haven't actually called the function, we've just defined it. But I could do um, get sum, uh, let's do one, seven, and like three or something. So one plus seven would be eight, plus three would be 11. So this should hopefully return us 11. If we run that, oh my God, I almost just fell back. <laughs> uh, it doesn't actually say anything yet because return does not print. It just returns the value so that we can print it out. So we could do something like print get sum 173. And as I said before, this should return 11. Let's see if it does. Yes, it does. Cool. So as you can see, get sum 173 turns 11. If I tried something like, maybe I try to add my name in there. That's going to give us an error because you can't add a, a string in a name or numbers in a, in a string, but we actually could change this function to something like, so I'm just gonna run this again. I could change this function to be something called like uh, combine name. So instead of now adding numbers, let's say we wanted to like take someone's name, we had their first, their middle, and their last name, and we wanted to just shorten it and like combine it as one word. So I could do pretty much the same thing. So when we're adding strings, if I did something like Keith plus Galley, that's my last name. I could do print Keith plus Galley. And as you can see down here, it combines those two things. And I also could add a space in there by doing Keith. Oh my God, what happened? I can't type. So hard with this, all this pressure of being filmed. Keith Space Galley. So we could say, take something like combined name of A, B, and C, and I could do like, and let's say, so I could do something like, let's say our name was Neil Patrick Harris. We'll take that as our name. So combined name of passing in the A, B, and C here, Neil Patrick. Harris. And to be more descriptive, we should, instead of calling this A, B, and C, we should call this first, middle, 
and last. It doesn't matter what we call it, but now it's like, oh, okay, you're going to just add together the first, middle, and last names here. Last. And if I run this, didn't print anything yet, but I could do full name equals combined name Neil Patrick Harris, and I could print full name. And as you see, it says Neil Patrick Harris. If we wanted to add the spaces, we just do um, quotations with a space in between. Oh, what the heck happened? Oh, it didn't add here. Now I got this. And one thing that I'll show you that's just something we'll be doing in the future, uh, just kind of a cool little thing to kind of will work towards is you can do all sorts of things on strings. So I could just get the first letter of Patrick by doing middle bracket zero. And don't worry about understanding this at all. I'm going to cover it in a video on strings that I'll post in a few weeks. Okay, so this is functions in a nutshell. Let's actually like test our skills and do some practice problems. We'll be going on a site called codingbat.com. I think this is a really good site to kind of work on the skills that you've been learning in these videos. So definitely try to do some of these exercises on your own. I'll post the link in the description. So we're on codingbat.com slash Python and we're gonna click on the warm up section. So click warm up one. And we'll start out by doing the problem monkey trouble. Nice, fun name, monkey trouble. All right, so we have two monkeys, A and B, and the parameters A smile and B smile indicate if each is smiling. We are in trouble if they are both smiling or if neither of them is smiling. Return true if we are in trouble. Okay, so take a sec, try this problem, and then unpause the video when you're ready to see the answer. Okay, to solve this problem, we're gonna have to use our knowledge of if and else if and else statements that we've learned in the previous video. So we have the function monkey trouble, a smile, b smile, and it says uh, return true if they're both the same or return false if they're opposite. So false is we're not in trouble. So we'll return false first if they're not the same. So we can say something like if a smile and not b smile. So this would say if this is true and this is not true, so this is false, then we wanna return false. And then we could write L if not a smile and b smile. So this would be a smile is false and b smile is true. We could write return false. And this is just the first way we can solve it. I'm gonna show a simpler way to solve it in a second. And then we could finally say, the other, the other case would be um, they're equal to each other, so they're both false or both true. So we just write else return false, or return true. And if I run this, uh, what happened? I try to save it, <laughs> oops, go. It, it did get all correct, cool. But we're actually doing a little bit more than we needed to here. So the kind of neat thing to see is that we don't have to do this not stuff here. We can just do if a smile equals equals b smile. So this would mean if they're both true or if they're both false, we want to return true because that's when we're in trouble. Otherwise, we want to return false. Oh my God, I just did control S again. And now if I run this, they're still all correct, and we're still not quite done. We can do it one more, even simpler way. What I could write is instead of even having any if statements, I could just write return a smile equals equals b smile, because this will evaluate to true or false, and we want this to be um, false if, we, if they're equal to each other. Oh, what the heck? Turn a smile equals b smile. Yeah, so, or we want it to be true. If they're equal to each other, we are in trouble. So we could, all we have to return is just whether or not they're equal to each other. Because the case is that they're not equal to each other, this statement right here would be false, and we get all of the answers correct. So this is the simplest, best answer you could have for this one. All right, let's do one more problem before we end this video. So we'll do sum double. 
So given two int values, return their sum. Unless the two values are the same, then return double their sum. So to begin, let's just do the first thing. We'll just return the sum. And this is the same thing as get sum that we just wrote. So we can just do return a plus b, right? Oh my God, I keep pressing control S. And as you can see, it didn't quite work. And that's because we didn't take into account if the values were the same. So what we can do is we'll do if a equals equals b, then we want to do one thing. And then if a is not equal to b, then we just return the sum as is normal. So if a equals equals b, uh, we want it to return double the sum. So we would return, we could do this multiple ways. We could write this line. And that's kind of a cool thing about these exercises and about coding in general. There's not just one answer. You can do things tons of different ways. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do two times a plus b. But note that because a equals b, you could just do like uh, two times two, time, two times a, or four times a. Uh, there's many ways to do it. So a equals b, return two times the sum, otherwise just return the sum. Run that, we got it all working. Cool, cool. All right, guys, that's all I'm gonna cover in this video. Hopefully you, get a, you feel like you have a good grasp of what functions are. Definitely recommend keep doing problems on this Coding Bat website. Um, and if you have any questions on how to do specific examples in here, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll help you out. I'll, I'll post the next tutorial video. By next week, we'll probably go over either for and while loops or we'll go over lists in Python. So be sure to subscribe to not miss that. Um, and if you learned something, throw a big thumbs up this video. Uh, I think that's it. So, peace.